Hey Rock, we are so excited to see you. We hope you feel right at home. We would love to have you join us in the journey of knowing Jesus. Here are three things we would like you to know. Number one, if you are new here, we wanna say welcome and we would love to get to know you better. You can go to rockofkc.com or scan the QR code and let's get connected. Number two, if you have been here for a while and you haven't joined a serve team, we strongly encourage you to get involved. There are so many different ways to take up your towel and serve. Go to rockofkc.com or scan the QR code on the screen. Let's do this life together as we serve. And number three, we would love to pray with you. If you have a prayer request or something that you are excited to share about what God is doing, go to rockofkc.com or scan the QR code right now. We wanna agree with you and see God move. Before we get started, here's something else that's going on at The Rock. Whether you're brand new to The Rock or you've been attending for years, if you have not checked out Discover The Rock, then lean in, tune in, and listen up because you are invited to come experience more about who we are, what we believe, and what it means to be a member, and how you can jump in the journey and be a part of this church family. You will hear from our staff on vision, culture, and values. You will learn about the many ways you can serve and use your gifts and talents in and through The Rock. And finally, you will discover the next step to connecting and building a deeper, more meaningful relationship with God and others. Light snacks will be provided and we will have Rock Kids classes open if you should need childcare. We can't wait to see you at Discover The Rock. We can't wait to hear what Jesus is doing in your life. We believe that The Rock is here to love God, love people, serve, and live generously. So let's get started. Good morning, church. We're so glad you're here today. Would you stand with us and let's worship our God.
guys believe that heaven just came right here in our midst? My heart is beating so fast. We serve such a good God. He is right here in this place with us. Amen. Wow, 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 wow. How many of you guys saw the double rainbow on your way in this morning? Anybody, anybody? All right, few people. Our early risers, our early risers saw it. It was an incredible thing to see. I mean, I've seen double rainbows before, actually just this year, but it's amazing when you see it because you're just reminded that the promises of God are true, right? He is faithful. He is so, so good. And his word will never return void. And that's a word for you guys this morning. Yesterday, or through this week, as I was praying about, you know, what is this community of believers? What does this body need to hear from you this week, God? And he he told me that this community of believers needs to hear that he sees you. He sees you. He knows exactly where you are right now. He knows exactly what you're going through right now. Many of you guys know, some of you don't. I am walking through the hardest season of my life. It is literally what the Bible calls the dark night of the soul. But here's what I know. Our God is the same. Here is what I know. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Here is what I know. He's gone before me. He's got a purpose. He's got a plan. He's not shaken. He's still on the throne. He is a good, good father. He's well acquainted. Yes, give it up for God. He is well acquainted with my pain. He is well acquainted with my grief. He's well acquainted with your pain, with your grief, with your depression, with your anxiety, with your relationships, with your tears, with your laughter, with your joy, all the things he is well acquainted. That's the God we serve. And so as we go into this time of quick prayer and back into a time of worship, I want to encourage you guys to lean in. Expect to hear from God this morning. He's got something he wants to speak to you. Close your eyes if you need to close your eyes. Remove the distractions. Allow God to move into your heart, into your home, into your neighborhoods, and speak a new word to you. Can you guys receive that this morning? All right, Father God, we love you. You are a good, good father. In the midst of pain, in the midst of grief, in the midst of confusion, you remain the same. Father, we pray that you reveal yourself in new ways. We believe that you are speaking loud and clear, that you are, you are bringing forth revival, you are bringing forth an awakening, you are bringing forth sons and daughters that you are raising up to extend your kingdom here on this side of eternity. Father, I pray for strength, I pray for wisdom, I pray, pray for peace, I pray for joy, I pray for the space between heaven and earth to be so thin, Father, for us to be able to hear you like never before, for us to be able to know you like never before, Father. We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise, because you are worthy of it, Father. It is in your mighty, mighty name we pray. Let's say amen. Let's go back into a time of worship.
mighty name of Jesus, the only name, the only God, the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that needs to break, if it's your will, if it's depression, if it's a prayer, a long-standing prayer, whatever it is that needs to break, the name of Jesus is the name that we need to declare. The name of Jesus is the only name, the only name that we need to call on. He will do the work. Lean in, lean in, and let him do the work. It is a wonderful, mighty, powerful name. He is our Abba Father. He cares, he loves, he wants to do for you. He wants you to prosper, he wants to bless you. He wants to heal you. He wants to answer your prayer. He wants to wipe away those tears. Let him, let him do it. Something has to break. Let him break it off of you. Let him break it off of you. Call on the mighty name of Jesus. There is only one name we need to call on. Only one name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. precious name of Jesus. You guys thought you were coming here to get filled. You guys just filled me up. I can hear you guys declaring the mighty name of Jesus. And I know, I know it's a sweet smelling aroma to our God in heaven this morning. What a time of worship. What a time of worship. Wow. All right. I'm just trying to catch my breath here. Presence of God is in this place. Amen. Amen. All right. I want to welcome everybody to the building. 
you guys have invaded this place. Also want to welcome our online community. We are so grateful for you as well. There is nothing quite like gathering as the saints to bring honor and glory to our Father in heaven. We're going to go into a time of our, our service where we get to talk about the generous heart of our Father. You guys see, I, I am quite convinced that if you had a deep revelation that from Him are all things and to Him are all things, generosity would flow from every ounce of your life. Generosity would flow from your time. Generosity would flow from your talent, and generosity would flow from your treasure. I love this scripture in Luke 12. We're going to read it from the message translation, and it says this. This is actually Jesus talking to his disciples, and he says, what I'm trying to do here is get you to relax. Is that a word for today or what? We're a little bit worried about a little bit of everything, or a lot of bit worried about a lot of bit of everything. You tell me. And Jesus says, relax, not be so preoccupied with the getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way He works fuss over these things. Guess what? We know God. We know the way that He works. We're not called to fuss and to worry over those things. The people who don't know God and the people who don't know the way that He works worry about gas prices, worry about inflation, worry about all of these things. But we are people who know God. It says right here, but you know both God and how He works. Steep yourself in God reality. What is God reality that He provides? What is God reality that He protects, that He goes before, that He knows every single need in this house? From your spiritual need, your financial needs, your physical needs, He knows. He's well acquainted like we already talked about. So steep yourself in those things. Steep yourself in God initiative, God provisions. You'll find all of your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. I love that. Jesus says, no FOMO in the kingdom of God. And then he says, you are my dearest friends. What a sweet, sweet word of endearment. You are my dearest friend. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. So here we are all living like this, right? Clinging, holding tight, and the God's trying to, God is trying to plant the kingdom the beauty, the realms of the kingdom into your hand, but he's not able because we're living like this. Just a quick testimony. Last week after one of our services, we had a gal from our, our community come up to Pastor Philip, and she was given a bonus check from her work, which she never gets. She made it very clear this was very rare for her to actually get a bonus check. And here's what she did. She turned around and handed a check to Pastor Philip for Run to Stop It, to abolish, that is worth clapping for, to abolish human trafficking here in Kansas City and beyond. She had a revelation of the giver. She got, there was getting it that took place, but she had a revelation of the giver and she turned around and released it. So she sowed not only into Run to Stop It, not only to stop human trafficking, but she also sowed into eternity because that's what our God does. He takes an earthly thing like the American dollar and then you release it and it becomes eternal. That's the God that we serve. This uh, scripture, I don't have it up there, goes on in verse 33 in the New Living Translation, goes on to say, sell all your possessions. So I'm not saying, hey, sell all your possessions. I mean, maybe God's telling you to do that. I'm not. But what I am telling you is to let the Spirit lead you. The Spirit will lead you always to a space of generosity. The flesh will say, stay in the boat. The Spirit will say, get out on the water. The flesh will say, hold on to that dollar. And the Spirit's going to say, release so you can experience all that I have for you, all the beauty, all the blessing that comes with the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. All right, there's several ways that you can give here. You can see those different ways on the screen behind you. As you're leaving, you can also give on in the black boxes uh, next to the door. But can we just give it up for God and how good He is and what He's doing in our worlds? Amazing. Since you guys are already standing, favorite time of the service, we're going to ask you to turn and greet a neighbor, say hello to someone.
Water baptism isn't just jumping into water on stage for show. There's nothing magical about the water. It's simply a public confession that I have decided to follow Jesus. Jesus said to repent and be baptized. So baptism means that I am following Jesus and now I'm giving a public declaration to say, that's what I'm doing. I'm with Jesus. I once was lost in sin, but now I'm raised to life because of what Jesus has done in me and is now doing through me. The act of baptism doesn't save me, but it actually is an act of obedience. I'd encourage you, if you're walking with Jesus and you haven't made the step of obedience and baptism, now is the time. Get signed up. We would love to celebrate your decision with you. Amen. Welcome to the Building Church. God is on the throne. Yeah. Worthy of all praise and honor and glory. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, right? Sounded like you all had breath today. And God is, God is at work moving in powerful ways. My faith is stirred um, in ways that's never been stirred in a long time. There's more. There's more. There's more. I'm just telling you, there's more. And... Uh, Man, we were singing that song, when, the Holy, when God's in the room, when Jesus comes, you, things have got to break. And um, I just thought of that psalm, oh, come on, oh, open wide your gates, that the king of glory may come in. See, you have gates on the door of your heart, and you can close them off or you can open them wide. And I encourage you to open them wide and say, God, come down and break every law, lie, break every excuse, just Turn the tables that need to be turned. Every lie, every excuse, every intimidation, every religious spirit. Every, come on now. Like let the king, God wants revival and awakening to hit all of our lives. He does. And, and uh, yeah, so praise be to God. And if you've not yet been water baptized, then let God kick over your disobedience and get signed up and get baptized. Quit, quit excusing it away. I'm too old. Or what will people think of me? Those are all idols that need to be cast down. Get signed up. The first mark of a disciple is that they were obedient. That's what God says. Go and teach them to obey. You want to know what a disciple does? They obey. They obey. Religious people excuse, but disciples obey. Come on now. Come on. All right. To God be the glory. Hey, listen. Um, we have... A word for us today. I was, I heard this word last night. I'm like, I woke up excited. Like, I, if I could have gotten on national TV, I said, I would have told everyone, you need to get here today. Like, you can watch online, but you need to be in the building. Because this word is a word from the Lord. And we have someone that's come from all the way from locked down under Australia. They were locked down. You thought we had it bad here. Like they were under, under surveillance one hour a day. Uh, oh, uh, certain times they could go to the store. I mean, they'd get arrested if they got caught out with two people in the car, stuff like that. So, you know, that's what happens when, when you have, well, what would you call it? The uh, Soviet Union of Australia or something. <laughs> anyway, Pastor Shane Baxter is a dear, dear friend. His wife, Georgie, is in the house too. Georgie, we love you. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, and um, he's one of our um, uh, apostolic overseers. Uh, we, we're becoming lifelong friends now, 12, 13 years. But it's a God-ordained relationship, and we have a God-ordained word for us. So stand and give Pastor Shane Baxter from Enjoy Church of Melbourne, Australia. Love you, bro. Go for it. Thank you. Yeah. Praise God. Come on, if we're going to give some applause, let's give it up for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. If we're going to do it for Jesus, let's do it for Jesus. Praise God. How you doing? Are you good? Are you happy? Yeah, real happy. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> See, when you're old, you don't need to be cool anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's like you just have fun in the house of the Lord. Uh, I am an international fun monkey, and I love having fun. How many of you love having fun? I, I love having fun. That's why the name of our church is called Enjoy Church. When I was a kid, I used to go to Endure Church. How many of you know that church? I don't want to go there anymore. I want to have fun until the day I go to be with the Lord. Anybody else? 
Praise God. You can take a seat. It's great to be in church, isn't it? Here we are, Sunday morning. It's now Sunday night, in the middle of the night back home, and uh, they've all done church, had church, and they've all gone to bed. But here we are, Sunday morning, getting ready for a great day. And i got to tell you, I feel at home here. I've been, we've been on the road now for uh, nearly three and a half weeks, four weeks, or something. It's basically four weeks now, I think. And uh, uh, we're a little bit homesick, but I've got to tell you, coming here makes us feel at home. We're good now, you know what I'm saying? Because we're with our people that are your people because we're all people together. How many of you are people? How many of you like your people? I like your people, praise God. How many of you like your pastors? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll speak in American. How many of you like your pastors? Pastors. All right. Come on, you can do better than that if you like your pastors. I'm be, I love your pastors. I got to tell you, so we, so we met 12 or 13 years ago, whatever it is now, I, I, I can't keep up. And the reason we met is because your pastor reached out to us in a foyer. We were at a conference, he saw us here, we looked like a couple of lone kangaroos hanging there by ourselves, and he just reached out and said, hey, we're going out to, to dinner with some friends, do you want to come with us because you don't know anybody here? And we said yes, and it was the best thing we ever did. Because we've started this relationship and friendship that is, has just continued on now for many years. But I want to encourage you, maybe you're here today, and it could be your first time, second time, third time, you're still working this place out. Can I encourage you, get yourself planted and come under the leadership of this couple, because they are true pastors. They are legit kingdom people. I want to encourage you, get yourself planted in the house, flourish here, bear fruit here, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Praise God. Now, just to give you the heads up, my name is Shane. My, my wife calls me Shaney Boy uh, <laughs> most of the time. She calls me other things too, but we won't go there. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so, but I, I just want to bring a word. I believe I'm here to bring a word to us today, to you today. Uh, typically, when I preach, I'm preaching to myself. That's the way it works. God speaks to me. I speak out what God speaks to me. God leads me. I lead people where God has taken me. So today as we come around the word, I just want to encourage you to lean in. I also want to encourage you to get loud in the house. Now you might be like, why do we need to get loud in the house? How many of you know the promises of God, you enter them with a yes and amen? A yes and amen. How many of you know a yes is not a nod? You know what I'm saying? A yes is not a nod. You, you access and you gain the promises of God with a yes. yes. And I want to encourage you, if you hear something's being preached at church, and, and it's like, that's the word, I want to receive that. You can give a yes and an amen. You can give a hallelujah, you can throw a shoe at me, you can do whatever you want, but I want to encourage you to get loud in the house. And he, here's the deal, if you don't know me, this is the way I work. The louder you get, the shorter I preach, all right? So if you want to get out of here before five o'clock tonight, and I know there's another service coming in, we've got room for them, but if you want to get out of here before five, you've got to get loud in the house, all right? If you don't get loud, I'm going to keep on going all day long, all right? So, yeah, Pastor Philip, it's still time to shout now because he wants me done, all right? All right, praise God for the pot, amen? Pot plant, that is, pot plant. A little bit of preaching, a little bit of pot goes a long way, amen? All right, I'm in the wrong state, aren't I? That's the next state. That's in Grand Junction, Colorado. It's like, it's, anyway, praise God. We'll leave that for another day. It looks, it's, it's awesome. Is it plastic or is it real? Anyway, praise God. Some of you are like, what are you on? I'm not on anything. I'm just happy. I'm in church. I'm in church. How many of you are in church? How many of you are the church? How many of you are ready for church? All right. Let's get into the Word. I like this front row. They're, they're rowdy, aren't they? They're rowdy. I could preach to you guys all day long. It's like, sometimes I go to some churches and fair dinkum, it's like preaching at a cemetery. You know what I'm saying? All the, all the stone heads are just looking at you. And it's like, anyway, you're not that. You're not that. You're alive. Everyone say, I'm alive. I'm alive. If you're alive, there's a reason you're alive. All right? As long as you've got breath, there's reason. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I'm going to live a life of praise. I'm going to give, live a life that brings God glory. Anybody else want to do that? All right, let's jump in today. Psalm 23, reading from verse 4. Here we go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. How many of you, when you whenever you read that, how many of you feel like wrapping that out? Even though I walk through the valley, you know what I'm saying? It's like... You know, you know what I'm talking about. All right. I just can't help it. I just hear that and I want to start rapping. But I can't rap. That's a problem. So I won't. All right. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though I walk. 
<laughs> you guys talk funny. Yeah, so even though I... All right, turn to the person beside you and say, walk. <laughs> All right, turn to the person on the other side that you don't like as much as the first person and say, keep walking. Keep walking. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, will fear no evil. I remember one time I was a 10-year-old, like last century, so going back a long way. When I was 10, my parents and my family went through a bit of a rough time. My dad was in business and uh, through the pressures of business and people ripping him off, he was a builder and he ended up in a bad headspace and one thing led to another and he ended up in hospital and he had a time in hospital. He gets out of hospital and some of his friends were going to go into the mountains, into the high country of Australia and they're going to camp with their families for a few weeks and so mum and dad said, why don't we go with them? Why don't we just take some time out now? It's been a rough season. Why don't we, why don't we head up into the high country? So that's what we did. We loaded up the car, we loaded up the van and off we went. We get up into the mountains and we, we arrived at the lake that we were going to and, and the sun is setting and it is beautiful. How many of you, how many of you know, how many of you are glad for a dream? Praise God. Uh, you know, it's like, what does the scripture say? A longing fulfilled. It, it's, it's good for the soul, isn't it? It's good for the soul. So here we are, we get up there, the, the sun is beginning to set, it's over the water, it's looking beautiful, but we don't know where my dad's friends are. So we start driving around the lake. We're driving, we're driving. It goes from a, a bitumen road or asphalt road uh, into, a, into a dirt road, and from a dirt road it turns into a track, and then uh, it, we, we, we're out there, we're going around this lake, and it is getting narrower and narrower and sure enough we just come to a flat out dead end it's over the end of the road is here so my dad does a yui how many of you know what a yui is all right he chucks a yui and and so my dad's a bit of a larrikin as you can imagine he's a bit of a scallywag bit of a rat bag whatever you want to call it here in this part of the world and so he's now there's already tension between mum and dad my mum is a little anxious at the best of time and my dad is a little careless at the best of time. They're not in a good headspace and tensions are rising. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you remember the movie, uh, the, the great classic, what, uh, uh, Vacation? How many of you remember the Chevy Chase? You know what I'm saying? It's like they start with a dream, but quickly it turns into a nightmare. Well, that's what's going on here. So my dad does a UE, we go off the road, and as we're going through the grass, a big rock comes up through the petrol tank and bang, it's all over. And so we pull up, you can smell petrol, there's petrol flowing everywhere. My mum is now screaming at my father and my father is screaming at my mother. And so I'm there, I've got two little sisters and it's like, it, this thing is out of control. So, so being the brave and the fearless 10 year old that I was, how many of you remember what it was like when you were brave and fearless? When you didn't know any better? Yeah. All right. Being the brave and fearless 10 year old that I was, I said to my parents, because and now, now what's happening is the sun is getting lower and we can see three fires across the lake. Now, to get across the lake, you've got to walk around the lake. But I said to mum and dad, because uh, we're talking about the fact that there's, there's the campsites, we've just got to get there. How do we get there? I, I said to mum and dad, being brave and fearless, I said, I will walk around the lake and I will go and get help. And for some unknown reason, my parents said, okay, off you go. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking now, when I think back at that moment, I'm thinking, what were they thinking? You know what I'm saying? I'm 10, it's getting dark, and they're like, off you go. How many of you know, if you do that today, you're going to get arrested for child abuse, you know what I'm saying? But sure enough, so they sent me off. So, so I put my little shoulders back, and I started walking and walking, and I'm thinking it's going to take like 10 minutes to get around there, but, it, but you go around, and you've got creeks, and you've got, you've got, it just goes further and deeper and wider. I've been walking 40 or 50 minutes, and now all of a sudden, I realize it's dark. It has got dark. If you've ever been in the mountains at, not, at, at that time of day, you know it gets dark really quickly. So I get myself out there. It's now dark. It wasn't the darkness that put fear into me. It was what came out of the darkness. <laughs> How many of you know there's things in the darkness? And so I'm out there in the wilderness, and I, I can see the, the shimmering water here, and I can see the darkness of the mountain here, and, and I can see the stars there, but, 
But now there's things coming out of the darkness. There's beasts. <laughs> there's creatures coming out of the darkness. And how many of you have ever been in a paddock and had a cow run past you or a horse run past you? You can hear the thumping. And so here it is. It's now dark. And there's these things running past me. Not only are these things now running past me, but now they're beginning to shriek at me like little devils. You know what I'm saying? It's like all of hell has been released on planet Earth. And I'm a 10-year-old. I'm in the dark. I feel like I want to cry and these things are running past me and, and, and so you're like well what, what were they what are they now you're probably thinking you're an Australian you exaggerate I'm not exaggerating I promise this is what is in, and they're shrieking at me as they run past and you're like what were they you know what they were they were the highland man-eating wombats that's what they were how many of you have ever heard of the highland man-eating wombats they are they are um, anyway how many of you have ever heard how many of you have heard a highland man-eating wombat shriek give me a wave if you've ever heard a shriek of a wombat anybody all right <laughs> so those that were here last night probably all right <laughs> good job all right so if you haven't ever heard a, a, a wombat shriek this is what they sound like we're going to hit the play button if we can listen to this think about it you're 10 Turn that off. All right, now think about it. You're a 10 year old, you're in the dark, and you've got these little things or things running past you. You can hear the ground going boom, 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 and then all of a sudden they start shrieking at you like that. How many of you know in an instant I went from being brave and fearless to a little 10 year old kid that really wanted to pee pee, if you know what I'm saying? As in, in an instant, I, I was like, I am full of fear and I do not, do not know now which way is up. I am in that place and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know that I'm ever going to get anywhere, let alone uh, back to my parents. I don't know that I'm going to save the day. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe you've come to church today and you're feeling a little bit like that, that you're, you're feeling like you are now in the dark. You are feeling like there's wombats all around. You feel like there are things shrieking at you and you have got fear all over you. You know what I did when I got there? Because I'm 10. I don't know what to do. I started out brave. I started out fearless, but now I'm, con I'm confronted with my own realities and in that moment, I had to make a decision. Truth is, I was paralyzed with fear, but now I've got to work out, what am I going to do? I can stay here and die, or I can make a choice to keep on going. You know what I did? I simply kept walking. I kept walking. That's a word for some of you here today. You just need to keep walking now. Everyone say, keep walking. Keep walking. You've got to keep walking. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you today. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, you may be in the darkness. You may be in the valley. You may be full of fear and you may be thinking, what the heck's going on? You've got wombat screaming at you. But I want to encourage you today, don't stop. Keep walking. Just keep walking. In John chapter 11, verse 38, it says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet uh, uh, wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. I'm sure we'd all agree that it doesn't get much darker than when you're dead, <laughs> like D-E-D, -E -D, dead. How many of you know that's as dark as it's ever going to get? But how many of you know not even death has authority when Jesus opens his mouth? When the Word of God comes into your situation, when the Word of God comes into your circumstance, how many of you know that which is dead is going to come back to life in Jesus' name? Jesus had already said to Martha, I love the fact that it's all in the Word of God. When Jesus had already said to Martha, what did he say? I'm glad you asked. This is what he said. John chapter 11, verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. I love the fact that when Jesus is praying out loud, he's not praying out loud because God is deaf. 
You know, you know what I'm saying? I listen to some people scream and hollow in some of our prayer meetings, and I'm like, I'm like, it's, what, what, what would he say? Relax. He just wants you to relax. As in, I might say take a pill, but I'll get myself in trouble if I said that, so I won't say that. But it's like, it's like sometimes it's like, just relax a little bit. You don't need to scream to get heaven to move. God is hearing you. Jesus knew who he was. He just needed to speak the word. He knew the authority that he has, but he's speaking out loud so everyone is aware as to what is going on. So I love the fact that Jesus knew who he was, but my question to you today, my friends, is simply this. Do you know who Jesus is? He knew he was the resurrection and the life. Do you know that he's the resurrection and the life? He knew nothing was impossible for him. But do you know nothing is impossible for him? Friends, I want to encourage you today. The, he, okay, think about this. The first thing that Jesus did when he turned up to the tomb was to say, let's get this stone out of the way. We've got to get the stone out of the way. He wanted to remove the obstacle between him and that which needed to move again, come to life again. I have no doubt at all there'd be people in this room today and your reality is as simple as this, is simply this. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you've come into church today and, and there are obstacles between where you're at and where the Word of God is at. As a result, you are struggling to hear the Word of God. How many of you know when you are overcome by fear, you're not going to hear the Word of God? How many of you have ever been in that place where fear is laying hold of you? Fear has taken hold of you. As a result, you don't hear the Word of God. How many of you know when you are overcome by disappointment, you're not going to hear the Word of God? You're going you're to be closed down. When anxiety is all over you, you're not going to hear the Word of God. When there's doubt, disappointment, unforgiveness, sin, etc., all these things are going to prevent you from hearing the Word of God. But when we rise up in faith and we roll the things out of the way, we push the things out of the way that are preventing us from hearing the Word of God, it is then that we're able to hear what God is saying to us. It's then that we're able to hear the Word of God. And when you hear the Word of God, at that point, you can rise up in life and in hope and step out into the life and into the light and into the whole of, of the life that God has got for you that he's already paid for you at Calvary. Friends, we need to hear the word of God. What is it today that is preventing you from hearing the word of God? Is it fear? Is it disappointment? Is it unforgiveness? Is it doubt? Whatever it is, push it out the way and say, Lord, speak to me now because I want to step into the fullness of the life that you've got for me. Where God has say, Lord, come on, Lord, speak to me now. Speak to me now. I love verse 40. It says here, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? If you believe. I, I think belief is an interesting thing. In our world at home, it wouldn't be like that here. I'm sure a, little, a different world, I know. But at, in our world, occasionally, I'm a pastor. You can work me out. I love people. But I, I don't, I don't. There's some things that just I don't have time for anymore. I don't have time for baloney. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people talk to me about what they believe. And I'm like, every now and again, I'm just calling it out more and more. I'll say to our congregation, I'll say, you don't need to tell me what you believe. I can see what you believe. I can see what you believe. You don't need to tell me what you believe. Some people are like, I believe this and I believe that. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, no way you believe that because I watch the way you live. And so I, you might be like, are you judging? And I'm like, no, I'm not judging. A simple observation. If people say consistently that they believe one thing but live another thing, how many of you know it doesn't line up? Friends, if you want to see the glory of God, the power of God at work in your life, then be a believer and rise up and start to live the life that Christ is asking you to live. Step in and do what Christ is asking you to do. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, believe as a verb, it's a doing. You, you can't sit on your posterior, your blessed assurance, and just expect God to do it all. He wants you to get up and do something now. Do something, all right. So then he said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So what did they do? Did they sit there? No. So they took away the stone. Simple as that. They're like, okay, Lord, if this is what you're saying, this is what I'm going to do. You're telling me to do it? This is what we're going to do. We're going to do it. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes 
and let him go. How many of you know we need each other? We need, I love this verse. It just points to the fact that the body ministers to the body. That's the reality. Yeah, we all go through things and we all come out of things, but we all need each other to get well. That's a reality. I'll leave that sermon for another day. Praise God. Friends, when you hear the voice of God, when you come alive in Christ, you've got to rise up, you've got to start walking, and you've got to keep walking. You've got to keep walking. I want to encourage every man, every woman in this place, keep walking now. Keep walking. Keep walking. Everyone say, keep walking. Keep walking. I, I know as well as you do, you, you come into the valley. You come into the season. You come into that, that space. You come into the shadows, and fear can overcome you. Comfort can overcome you. Victory sometimes can even overcome you. Not just defeat, but sometimes in our victory, we just get comfortable and want to take a seat. Friends, I want to encourage you to keep walking. you got to keep walking. Now, this one thing I'm sure of in a room this size, I'm sure that there'd be people all over this room, and if you were to be honest today, you can identify with coming into the valley. All right, so you started your walk in Christ, you're ascending the mountain of God, you're going higher, and you've come into a valley. Friends, can I encourage you, you're always going to have valleys. All of us will have valleys. It's called life. <laughs> That's why we need to continue to walk a walk of faith, because we're going to continue to have, have, have valleys. I think it's interesting how, I don't know about you, have, do you ever think about the fact that God gave us four seasons? If I was God, this is why I'm not God, but if I was God, I would have given us three seasons. I wouldn't have winter. I don't like winter. I'm just not for winter. Some of you are probably like, you like the cold. I don't like the cold. I, that's why I escaped, praise God, as in if I couldn't hop on an airplane to come here in your summer, I would have swam across the Pacific, you know what I'm saying? I want to get away from winter. I don't like winter. I'm like, God, why did you create a winter? It's horrible. It's cold. It's like you've got to rug up all the time. I wouldn't have created, if I was God, I would have said, okay, between 2 o'clock and 10 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. and 10 a.m., I wouldn't have even put that in the day, you know what I'm saying? I said, I'd like to be out to party all night, then wake up at 10 a.m., forget the rest of it. But how many of you know that's not real? There is between 2 and 10. It's real. There is a winter. It is real. There's going to be valleys in life. It's real. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be seasons that we don't like. But how many of you know God will take us through if we keep on walking? He will be true. He will be faithful. But we've got to keep on walking. Maybe you've come to church today and you feel like your sun is setting. Well, I said, oh, friends, I don't know your circumstances, but this one thing I want to say, as in, it doesn't matter what season, because we can talk about any area of our life. Friends, I want to encourage you, you may feel that way, but I've got a feeling the glory of God wants to continue to rise on you. The glory of God wants to continue to shine on you. So I want to encourage you today to go back to what David said in, in Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk, walk, <laughs> I love it. You guys sound so good. All right. Even though I walk, where, where, where am I walking? Where am I walking? Through. All right. What am I doing? I'm walking through. All right. We've got to get that in our spirit today. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I, I love. I love David's confession. He's not denying what's going on. I know a lot of Christians, they live on denial, if you know what I'm saying. I'm not talking about the river in Egypt. That's the Nile, not denial. But a lot of Christians, that they just deny the facts and what's going on around them. It's too hard. They can't get the, it's like, so they deny it. They think somehow that's faith. I, I, don't, I don't get that. If it's, if it's there, it's there. As in, truth will always trump facts. I'm not afraid of facts. If that's a fact, that's a fact. But the truth is going to trump it. So this may be where I'm at, but I've got something else happening. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I'm going through. I'm not staying here. I'm not camping here. I'm not setting up a tent here, and I'm not dying here. Why? Because God's got a better life for me out the other side of this valley. So I'm walking through the valley because God is with me. He has never forsaken me, and he will never forsake me, praise God. So let the wombats come. Amen? Let the wombats come because we've got something for them that's very special from God. All right. Psalm chapter 3. I like David. David. David is one of those guys that, you know, we hold him up, but we know there was a humanity side of David that was a little bit naughty. And you see it throughout everything. It's like he is, he is 
a guy. There's no doubt about that. He's a guy, he's a bloke, he's a, what would you say? That's right, praise God, we'll go with that. That's what he is. All right, Psalm chapter 3, reading from verse 3. But you, O Lord, this is David, the same David that's writing later, though I walk through the valley of the ship, though I walk through the, you know. Aye, aye. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts my head high. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. Interlude, see love. Where's Ron Burgundy when you need him? All right, praise God. I lay down and slept. I woke up in safety for the Lord was watching over me. I, 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 like, I, I like this. Just pause for a minute. Just, well, we should put an interlude there. I, I lay down and slept. How many of you know you can sleep in the middle of the storm? Think about it. Jesus in the boat with the disciples. The disciples are, ah! but where was Jesus? He's down having a snooze. You know what I'm saying? He's got peace because he knows his father's watching over him. I want to encourage you today, in the midst of the storm, you can sleep. In the midst of the battle, you can sleep. Here's David. He says, I lay down and slept. Praise God for the sleep of the righteous. I woke up in safety for the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of 10,000 enemies who surround me on every side. Arise, O Lord, rescue me, my God. Slap all my enemies in the face. Yes. Anyone get excited? How many of you pray that regularly? <laughs> uh, come on, put, come on, be honest. We're in church, all right? All right. Slap all, it's like, it's like, are you allowed to pray? Slap all my, oh, it gets better. Praise God. It gets better. Shatter the teeth of the wombats. Amen. Amen. Shatter the, bang. It's like, now I'm slapping, now bang. All right. Oh, praise. A bit of Aussie coming out. Anyway, moving right along. So, so slap all the enemies in the face. Shatter the teeth of the wicked. Walk. Everyone say walk. walk. Say keep walking. Walk. You've got to keep walking. If you're going to see the victory in God, you've got to keep walking. You can't stop. I know sometimes you want to. I know sometimes fear wants to lay hold of you. But you've got to keep walking. Friends, you'll never possess the mountaintops. You'll never possess the promises of God if you're not prepared to own the valleys that you're in. You've got to own the valley if you're going to go higher in God. You've got to own where you're at. You've got to recognize it and pray into it and speak into it and take hold of it and keep walking. Friends, I want to encourage you today to keep walking so when the wombats shriek, and they will, can I encourage you? Remind them, because the wombats will come and they will shriek at you. Remind them that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not below. Remind them that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You remind them of the Word of God. Some, <clears throat> sometimes, I don't know whether you ever get it, but sometimes in our world, we get people that come and they bring their, their, their sermon requests. They think we're like karaoke church, you know what I'm saying? And they, can you, can you speak a sermon or can you do a series on, on, uh, on uh, spiritual warfare? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do this. As in, why don't you just open up your Bible occasionally? <laughs> They want us to do a series, and they open their Bible like once a year. It's like, why don't you just go back to your Bible? And it's like, can you, can, Pastor Shane, can you please just, just do one sermon on spiritual warfare? No. Just pray. Get on your knees and cry out to God. Get into the presence of God. Pray for your family. We don't need a series. It's like, there's some people, the best thing they can do is just Throw their iPhone in the toilet. Just WC. Get rid of that thing. Flush that thing away. Because they'd prepare to, they, they would prefer to listen to another podcast than get on their knees. They'd prefer to listen to another podcast than open up their Bible. Where if we would go back to the Word of God, I don't know about you, I'm an old-fashioned church guy. I believe the Word of God is the Word of God. And if the Word of God is the Word of God, I just need to know what's in the Word of God and begin to declare it in my life, declare it over my marriage, declare it over my family, and see the goodness of... You can tell them I'm getting fired up. I'm sorry. It just comes out. comes out. Let's get back to the Bible. Everyone say Bible. <laughs> yeah, that's how you guys talk. I like it. Uh, you mess me up. I go home and I say to our church, uh, why don't we open the Bible or the Word, the Word. Why don't we open the Word of the Lord? You guys are awesome. We're the only two people in the room that don't have an accent. It's incredible. So many, so many. Anyway, praise God. All right. I love the Word. 
What does the word say? Sometimes people say, I don't care what they say. What does God say? Uh, when the doctors say, yeah, that's the, the facts, but what does the truth say? That's what I've got to get back to. John 3, uh, 3, John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. How many of you know, if you go back to the, the Greek word from where we get all, how many of you know what it, what it means? All. <laughs> that's what it means. It means all. This is the heart of God for every believer for every child of his, that you would prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. How many of you can believe for that? How many of you want to believe for that? Can I encourage you, keep walking, keep believing for that. I know know sometimes we hear stuff and realities come into our life. Realities come into our life as well, but we're not going to stop walking. We're going to keep walking because other people are dependent upon us walking on. Friends, I want to encourage you today. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 6 says, you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. How many of you are in for that? Blessing on the way in, blessing on the way out. Now in Australia, we only have in and out (laughs) what about you you got no idea what I'm talking about if you're blessed on the way in and blessed on the way out how many of you would consider that that means you're blessed all the time how many of you know God wants to bless you all the time when you're in and when you're out on the way in and on the way out God wants to bless you and everybody said Amen. amen Malachi or for the Italians in the house the book of Malachi praise God how many of you like the book of Malachi anyway moving right along Chapter 3, verse 12 says, Then all nations will call you blessed. All the nations are going to call you blessed. Your family is going to call you blessed. Your neighbors are going to call you blessed. Your work colleagues are going to call you blessed. Praise God. The royals are going to call you blessed. That's your team. Come on, guys. The royals. See what I'm saying? Not the royal family. I don't care for those guys. They sent us to Australia. That's a different, that's a different royals. See what I'm saying? I'm talking about your royals. Praise God. The one that gave me the ball. Hey, What's his name? It doesn't matter. (laughs) You say, what? Praise God. All right. So the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 12 says, Then all nations will call you blessed. blessed. (laughs) All nations will call you blessed. Thank you very much. Praise God. Blessed for your land, your life, your marriage, your family, your business, your ministry, Your church will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. The land of your life will be blessed. Can I encourage you, when it comes to your life and your dreams, because I understand over the last few years, all of our dreams have taken a hiding, taken a pounding. Begin to dream again. Begin to see expansion coming into your land. Begin to see your tent curtains going wider and deeper and going, extending, expanding. Begin to see the goodness of God coming in that life might come and life might flow. The land of your life will be blessed. You'll go into the rock church and you'll come out blessed. You'll go into marriage and you'll come out blessed. You'll go into business and you'll come out blessed. You'll go into ministry and you'll come out blessed. You'll go into hospital and you'll come out blessed. So when you hear the wombat shriek, and you're going to hear the wombats in life, it's just welcome to life. But when they shriek, shriek, command them to be silent in Jesus' name. So so I'm a 10-year-old. I'm in the dark. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, I went, I went from brave and fearless to, I'm packing my dacks, if you know what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm there. I'm like, what do I do? So I made the decision to keep on walking. I'd already been walking 40 or 50 minutes. And I start walking. I can see the campfire. So I've got the shimmer, so I know where the water is, and so I can hear the little bit of, bit of waves coming in. And, but I've got these things. They just continue to run past. They're shrieking and shrieking. I just kept walking, and I've got to tell you, I wanted to bawl my eyes out. I'm a kid. And I was like, well, I just kept walking, kept walking, kept walking, kept walking, kept walking. And then so I finally get to the first camp. Here's this guy. He's, he's mucking around with the fire. He's got a family there, but he's just at the fire by himself. I've walked out sort of from this angle here, and so it is pitch black. We're in the middle of nowhere, and here's this skinny little kid walks out of the bush. <laughs> and I walk out of the bush, and I said, excuse me, and he's like, <laughs> and... And he said something which I cannot say in church, if you know what I'm saying. He was like, beep, 
And it's like, where did you come from? I said, so I told him a little bit of what happened. And I said, I thought you may have been the families. And he said, he said, no, there could be one of the other camps. So they weren't too far. So he sent me on to the next camp. And so, so I start walking down to the next camp. And I've got to tell you, my heart sank a little bit further when it wasn't them. Because I'm like, what, what, if, what if none of these guys are them? And so I get to the second camp. And there's families in this camp. And I, I walk in. And I said, excuse me, do you know, I said it the same, same thing to the first guy. I said, do you know Alwyn Baxter? And so I'd encourage you, if you have children in the future, sons, don't call them Alwyn. It's like a curse, you know what I'm saying? Because like, people say, Alan, I said, no, Alwyn. And it's like, Albert, no, no, Alwyn, Alwood, no. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, so, but it's like, no, we don't know him. So I said, all right, now this, at this point, my heart is just, uh, have you ever... Have you ever had a moment in life, maybe you're there today, where it's like, Lord, if you don't come through now, I just don't know. You know what I'm talking about? I'm at that point. I walk into this third camp, and I said to these guys, it was families everywhere in this camp, motorbikes and four-wheel drives and boats, and I walk in, and so <laughs> they see me walk out of the darkness. They were like, but, so I said, excuse me, do you know Elwyn Baxter? And these guys said, yeah, he should be here by now. I guess at that moment, I started crying. I said, <laughs> and they're like, kid, what's the matter? What's the matter? And I was like, oh, so I told them the story. They were so good. They were, they were all plumbers, basically, plumbers and builders and whatever. But they were good guys. They gave me food and alcohol. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but they did. Please don't tell my mum. My mum thought I was just so happy to come back. But anyway, it's like, it's like, but they, it's, they were just trying to look after me. And I wouldn't recommend it. Don't go giving your kids alcohol. You're going to lose them. You know what I'm saying? But, but that's what these guys did. And then they, they got me and they put me up into the middle of the four-wheel drive. And so we're in this big four-by-four four and I've got these two big mountain men beside me. And, and I've got to tell you, I'm like, I'm like, I'm 10 and I'm fearless again and I'm brave again. I, f I felt like a Texas Ranger, you know what I'm saying? I felt, was, uh, I felt like a Power Ranger. I felt like Tom Cruise, you know what I'm saying? In one of those 28 movies where he saves the world, you know, the Tom Cruise thing. And it's like, I just felt like, yes. We went back. I, I got to tell you, I, I still remember the, my family when we got back. They were overjoyed. They were probably thinking, why did we send our kid out into the bush? I'm thankful that I just kept walking. They're thankful that I kept walking. Some of you are in the room today and your spouses need you to keep walking now. I know there's a million reasons and the darkness is there and the wombats are screaming, but your, your spouse needs you to keep walking. Your, your children need you to keep walking. Parents, can I encourage you? What walks in you is going to run in your children. Keep walking in God so God might run in them. Keep, keep walking now. Your, your families, they need you to keep walking. Your community needs you to keep walking. Your church, your pastors, they need you to keep walking. This, this city is a great city. It needs a great church, which this is a great church. But this city needs you to keep walking now. Don't lose heart and don't lose hope. Don't listen to the wombats because the wombats will scream at you. The darkness will try and overcome you. But I want to encourage you today, just keep walking. Keep walking. Don't stop now, but keep walking. Huh. Huh. For some of you today is the day to say goodnight to the wombats. We're not going to stay here anymore. We're going to keep walking. I'm going to walk into the light of Christ. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, have you ever thought about the fact that the shadow isn't real? The shadow has no substance and the shadow has no teeth. But we fear the shadow. We fear the wombat. We fear the shriek. And we fear the voices all around. How many of you know what a wombat looks like just out of curiosity? A number of you. Know. Can we put the photo up of the wombat? Let's have a look at what the wombat looks like. That's what a wombat looks like. And I wanted the pee-pee because of the wombat. The, the wombat was never going to kill me. The wombat was never going to take me out. The wombat was never really going to do anything. It was shrieking because it was scared of me. But I didn't know. So I was scared of it. Don't fear the wombats. Don't fear the darkness. Just keep walking. 
I want to pray for every man and every woman in this place because I know what it's like to be stuck and frozen in fear, in doubt, in, 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 in discouragement, in disappointment. I know what it's like. I've had seasons, you've had seasons. I've had my seasons, maybe you're in a season now. When we were locked up for the four and a half months at the end of last year, it is true, like Pastor Philip said, we weren't allowed out, our, out, out of our house. As in, if you know me, I love people. I'm locked up. Thank you for everyone that prayed for Georgie because I was driving her crazy, no doubt. I'm locked up for four and a half months. So I want to I wanna be very unchristian like As in, I started losing the plot. Praise God for people that were praying and God that was there for us. And we kept leaning in and leaning in. And now we're here with you. But maybe you're in your valley like I was in my valley last year. Maybe you're in a dark place. Maybe you're surrounded by wombats. Our government, anyway, won't go there, praise God, speaking of wombats. As, uh, as, uh, as, uh, it was just hard, it was difficult. It was, uh, but maybe you're in a really difficult spot at the moment and you're just frozen in fear, but you want the courage to keep going. You want the strength to keep going. You want the tenacity. You want the faith to keep going. It's not, don't, don't, don't listen to the lies of the enemy who would tell you you're this or that because you're, you're stopped at the moment. Just rise up and put your hope back in God, your faith back in God, and keep on walking now. Keep on walking. If you're here today and you're saying, Shane, I want the strength, I want the courage, I want the tenacity, I want a gift of faith that I might rise up from this place today and walk out of here and keep on walking into the fullness of the life that God has got for me. If that is you, I want to pray for you today. Every man, every woman that's in the house, you're saying, that's me, that's me, that's me. Can I encourage you, raise your hands towards heaven right now. Raise them up. Yeah, this is good. I'm not even getting you to close your eyes. You're all just putting up your hands. We know what we're talking about. You know what I'm talking about today. Friends, I want to encourage you. God is for you. He's not against you. As we've heard, already heard through Devon today, God knows where you're at. God knows who you are. He knows your story. He knows the wombats that are in your life. He knows the darkness that is coming after you. He knows the fear that's trying to lay hold of you. But God is for you. He's not against you. He's a good, good father with a good promise and a good purpose for your life. And today, Lord, I speak hope in Jesus' name. I speak strength. I speak courage. I speak tenacity. And I speak a gift of faith on every man, on every woman, Lord, that they might rise up from this place today, that they might walk into the fullness of the life that you've got for them. I pray, Almighty God, that the wombats in their life would stop, Lord God, speaking in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, the wombats in their life would be silent in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, every man, every woman, they would rise up in faith and they would walk into the glorious future that you've got for them. I thank you, Lord God. You are not a liar but the word that you have spoken over their life shall be proved true in Jesus' name. The best years of their life are still ahead of them. The best days of their marriage is still ahead of them for their families, their business, their ministry and all that you've put in their hand. It is all before them. Lord, I pray, Lord God, let faith arise and let God's enemies be uh, scattered in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said together, amen and amen. God wow, bless you. amazing, amazing. What a word. Can we give it up for Pastor Shane Baxter? Yes. Yes. What a word. So encouraged. How many of you guys are leaving different than the way that you came in today? All the hands. I will tell you, uh, seeing everybody raise their hand, I love that you didn't ask people to close their eyes. And everybody in faith raised their hand. And it moved me. It moved me. And God saw that, and it moved him. It moved him. He saw you raise your hand in faith and he is going to meet you. He will be faithful to meet you right where you are at. And he's going to give you that strength and that courage to keep on walking. Amen. All right, just a few things before we leave. We've got a couple announcements. Crew Nights is coming up. Uh, this is for our 7th through 12th grade students. Um, this is put on by our students, and it's, it's an incredible event. You can get registered online um, or at the Welcome Center. This will be happening August 11th and 12th, which is a Thursday and Friday night. So make sure you uh, get signed up for that. Fresh Start, my right, your left. We have our Fresh Start wall. We have a team of people over there. If you are new to this faith journey, we would love to link arms with you, walk alongside you, put some tangible resources resources in your hand, answer questions, build a relationship with you. So make sure you stop by the Fresh Start wall. Uh, new here, also to my right and your left, if you are new here, you can go through the double doors to meet Pastor Philip and Pastor Susan. They'd love to greet you, answer any questions that you have. You can also scan the QR code that's typically 
back up behind me, but there's also some on the front. There it is right there. On the back of your seat pockets, you can scan that and fill that out as well. And then last but not least, if you have the freedom to do so, please raise your hands. I'd love to bless you guys as you leave today. Uh, Rocket Casey, I bless you to love God. I bless you to love people. I bless you to serve and live a generous life. Can we all say amen together?